Hello and welcome to Wolfman Gaming. This is my Metro Exodus good ending walkthrough and this is mission 2 also known as Volga and this video is part 1 out of 2. And as you can see you have a little map on your screen. I want you to ignore all the icons on it just follow the arrow because I have done some merciless trimming <laughs> on this chapter. But in this in this area there is a technophobic cult that reside and we need to stay on neutral grounds with these people. We are now inside their church and they try to lock us in. But stay on neutral grounds, you cannot kill them. Or at least you have to kill a very minimum <laughs> amount of them. <laughs> But I'm gonna stay away from killing them completely. On my first playthrough of this place, I turned this church into a slaughterhouse. And on my second run while I was recording this, I realized that you can get out of here very smoothly, very quickly, and without causing a fuss at all. And that little map screen you saw is something you're gonna see a lot throughout these videos because I had three hours of material, well I think even four hours of recorded video and to make this as streamlined as possible and uh, as few videos as possible I trimmed out all the running in between objectives. But here we have our first guard. Always go for the knockout. Do not kill these fellas. But do feel free to knock them out because they have some upgrades for your weapons. And other good stuff. There's always, it's always good to stock up on ammo and stuff like that. And in this mission I mainly focus on using the Kalashnikov and the A-Shot with the double barrel extension. Because I think they are a great combo. Kalashes are great against human enemies and uh, the A-Shot or the double barrel shotgun is great against mutants. So always try to keep your ammo count quite high. But our reason for going through this place right now is that we are trying to sneak back out. We are going to steal a boat from these fellas. And as I said, my first time through this, <laughs> through this church, I turned this place into a complete slaughterhouse. I had no idea where I was going. But on my second, on my recording run, I knew what I was supposed to do. I had kind of a plan or I knew the layout pretty well. And I realized you could get out like this. Very streamlined, very easy. So we are just going to jump down from this little ledge. The boat we need to take is just over there. And then we can piss off out of here. And in this walkthrough I will also show you how to get all the upgrades for Artyom's suit. There are 12 in total. Eight are located throughout this level. In this video I will show you how to grab seven of them. And five of them are in the Caspian level. So maybe that makes it 13. Can't remember exactly how many there are. <laughs> but once again we saw a little map screen. We're gonna take the boat over to the little island where our friend Duke is. And if you follow this guide you will also get a trophy called Duke and that is your friend your comrade in arms that you have with you here at the Volga level he will stay out of your way most of the time but in order to get the good ending you have to keep Duke alive throughout this level and the last the most crucial part is the last part which I will show you in part in or in video 2 here is our first upgrade by the way that is the compass which I will be using throughout this guide. You can skip it if you want to. It will always show you the path to your next objective. And after you grab the compass, just run back to camp and you will get your next objective. But before we head for that, which is down on the south side of this area, we're gonna head first into this little shack. We will pick up the second upgrade, which is the extended <laughs> filters for our gas mask. Put on your gas mask while you're in here, people. <laughs> this place is irradiated. 
And after you've picked this up, we are gonna go into a bandit camp that is just over there to the right. And in there, we are gonna pick up the ammo vest. And we're also gonna do a little extra thing. Because in this bandit encampment, there are two prisoners locked in a cell. And we are gonna unlock their cell before we head out of this place, after we have taken out all the bandits. Because that will allow you to pick up the eight, eighth, the last upgrade <laughs> in this in this level, which is the night vision goggles. You can get them without picking up the key when uh, you get when you get to that area. But I prefer doing it here, also because you get a good karma point for doing so, or for releasing the prisoners and when you're in here i like to go i hope you <laughs> i hope you can see things properly because i realized it's quite dark in here and i don't want to turn on my flashlight because i don't want them to know where i am until i'm ready to expose myself <laughs> so what i'm gonna do is sneak across these boards things are gonna start falling apart so keep on the move at all times do not stop, because then you will fall down at the bottom floor, and that's where all the bandits are. But I move over to this place, which I think is a great place to camp out, because some of them will come running up here. By the way, isn't that the best knife throw you ever seen? <laughs> Feel free to back up the video a little bit. <laughs> Watch that again. And these guys also have watchdogs, and you will see a trophy pop right about now, I think. Or maybe not. Do I remember this wrong? Because there is a trophy called Antibiotic, and that is for killing 300 non-human enemies. There we have it. <laughs> and in my previous video, or in one of the previous video, I talked about the fact that all trophies stack across playthroughs. You will also see me get the Dressed for Success trophy for picking up all of Artyom's upgrades when I pick up the last upgrade in this video. And that is due to the fact that on my first playthrough, that was the one upgrade I missed of all of them. <laughs> I thought I had scavenged through everything, but one of them got away. But I just the good thing that you can or that the game does stack. I don't know how it works for normal collectibles. I think I read somewhere that it doesn't so I'm gonna have to do a run through this game where I pick up all the collectibles but I'm not gonna do a guide for it because I'm gonna use a collectible guide myself. Because I have platinumed Metro 2033 and uh, what's it called? Metro Last Light. And uh, I really want the Platinum for this one as well. And I have started playing through this game on Ranger Hardcore. Started playing it a little bit because uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice came out the other day. So I'm very hyped about playing that. That was a shitty shot. <laughs> Always try to make your bullets count. <laughs> when you when you have the when you have the advantage of the enemies not knowing where you are do your best not to miss and this is the only instance in this game where i use the pistol actually i think it is a good weapon but i prefer the kalash and and uh, a shotgun they pack a bigger punch and stealth isn't so vital in this game as it was in the previous ones. Don't focus on that as much. But something else I want to talk about because now I have taken out all the enemies I think and I switched out my pistol for a shotgun with double barrels. That is really effective, it packs a brutal punch at close range and there is 
a few places here where we are going to face off against a lot of mutants. And it's really effective against them. But here we have the two prisoners. So I'm just checking around. I was being a little bit paranoid <laughs> if there were any guards left. But they are all dead. And we can break open this lock. Managed to hit the prisoner by ex accident. <laughs> Sorry about that, dude. But he is so grateful that we saved him and his friend. So he will give us a key. I will not be using this key in this level, or I will be using it in this level, but you will not see me use it in this video. That is in part two. But he does hold a little speech. And also, something I want to say, I've talked about the fact that you can sheath your weapon. When you come to... Because in this level, there is a place when you're going to pick up the teddy bear. Which is something we'll get into more later. But when you're close to where that is located, there are two of these guys. Here is the ammo vest or the ammo pouch vest. I recommend you equip that vest as soon as possible, as soon as you get a chance. I think you can only do it at workbenches, but it is great to have. And in here we are going to pick up the throwing weapon vest. If you're a big fan of using grenades and uh, throwing knives and stuff like that, you can use that. But I prefer the ammo vest because I don't want to end up in a situation where I am shit out of bullets. <laughs> That is a really bad situation to be in. So I always prefer. And also, you can see at times in this, I am shit at aiming. <laughs> so I need every bullet I can find. <laughs> but if you're going for dressed for success, you're going to need this. Also, always keep your gas mask off when you don't have to use it. Because your gas mask can break and if you head into an irradiated area and you have a broken gas mask, you're fucked, dude. Sadly to say. <laughs> and something happened right there that I want to talk about. In this, in this game, your weapons can get dirty. Or <laughs> can get dirty. They will get dirty. Whenever you move through high water or you just move around outside basically and uh, you fire it a lot your weapon can jam first time I realized it could jam was in this level on my first playthrough I was running I was being chased by mutants and suddenly my weapon froze and for a split second I didn't understand what the fuck had happened <laughs> If your weapon jams, just press square button and he will unjam it. He will pull the loading thingamabob, whatever it's called, a little crank on the side. I don't know jack shit about weapons. <laughs> and that will unjam it. But whenever you reach a workbench, take your time to clean your weapons. And here we have the last guy. He surrendered, so we are just going to knock him out. I never kill enemies that have surrendered. And I think I talked about that in the last video that if you do it, I think it may affect your karma. I'm not 100% sure, but it's always good to be safe. And here I'm just going to show you extra time on my map where I am. And we pick up the throwing weapons vest and then we can go on to our next objective <laughs> because when you come back from the church this is actually the place you're supposed to go all that other stuff I just did was detours to pick up all different upgrades and here we are looking for a technician mechanic or whatever it is called crest and he will help us fix up the aurora. 
And to get up to where I am, you have to climb up on containers and up onto a crane and you will end up here on this little roof or whatever you call it. Where we will be attacked by a bunch of these human-like mutants. Crest will do his best, <laughs> little rhyme right there, to give you support. He will use his sniper rifle as best he can. Do not rely on him saving your ass. But he can sometimes at least take one or two out that may sneak up from behind. But as soon as all the mutants are dead, we can head up. He will lower the crane so you can head up and talk to him. And in his place, you are given the opportunity to sleep. Because there are beds scattered around these different areas where you can switch in between nighttime and daytime which have their own pros and cons the pro of moving around at nighttime is that human enemies will mostly hang out around their campfires and it's easier to sneak past them but the con is that mutants are more active there are more mutants up and about so you're gonna have to do like a way in whichever you prefer. The con of moving around at daytime is that sure there are fewer mutants but the ones that are around have an easier time spotting you and that goes double for human enemies. They have an easier time spotting you as well. But I have done 95% of this level on daytime the only time i switch it out to nighttime is actually towards the ending of of this level the very last objective because then we're going in into a depot i think it's called where we're gonna steal a train car and it's guarded by a lot of human enemies and on my first playthrough, I just went in there daytime, kept my distance because I had a scope for my Kalash at the time, or by the time I got there, and just went in balls to the wall, guns blazing, had a great old time. But <laughs> when I recorded this walkthrough, I realized, or I decided to try out, actually, it's more, more uh, honest. I decided to try out going in at night time and I realized it was so much easier because you could just sneak in and sneak out. It's not 100% true because I got spotted <laughs> while I was heading back out of there. But then you can just haul ass. And beds are also great for... If you are wounded and you don't want to use a med kit, or maybe you're out of med kits, you can go search out the bed, lie down and sleep. Doesn't matter if you sleep for 24 hours or 12 hours, but that will heal you. And when you're playing on Ranger Hardcore, as in every other difficulty, it will also save your game. Because on Ranger Hardcore, this was recorded on normal, but I did some research on Ranger Hardcore before I started trying it. And they have taken out the ability to do quick saves. You cannot save manually on that difficulty, you only have checkpoint saves. Which is a bit of a double-edged sword, in my opinion, because I think it is the highest difficulty, therefore you should be limited. But I read about a few people online that have ended up in death loops. Just because the checkpoint is in an awkward situation and it triggers just after they've been spotted. So the game spawns them in at the very second the enemies fire. And from the little experience I've gotten from Ranger Hardcore playing through the first two levels is when you come into a situation where you're in a standoff against enemies the one that fires first is the one that gets to tell the tale 
<laughs> because enemies pack a brutal punch. And I ended up in a situation on the train where the game spawned me in at the very second I got spotted by the enemies because I was being clumsy. So every time the game spawned me in, I had to fire for my life just to just to survive the very first few seconds. And it took me a few tries to get past that part, actually not because of them, but because of the enemies in the next cart, because they were alerted as well, because me and the soldiers had been shooting up the train cart just before there, so they were quite curious about what the fuck was going on. <laughs> but in this bunker we are in right now, maybe I should talk a little bit about that. We have gone in here because Anna fell down a hole. She went in Alice in Wonderland style. And we are trying to find the switch to get the hell out of here. And this is where the compass is really great to have with you. Because as I said, it always shows you your next objective or the path to your next objective. And finally, I found the fuse box, which is the first part of unlocking the door out of here. We have to get power back on because it's one of those big, big ass security doors. But we have turned that on, and we have another s mutant coming in. These mutants are actually quite interesting, because they come in different colors. And it seems like different colors of these zombies take different amounts of punishment before they go down. The ones that are greenish gray seem to always, they are the weakest. They go down in one shotgun round, point blank range, fuck off, you're dead. The red ones take a bit more of a beating, and I think the blue ones, like mutated smurfs, they take shitloads. And I don't know what the difference is in between them, if they are somehow more irradiated or something like that, but... They are quite annoying when they come in big packs. And that's why you should always keep a shotgun and always keep your shotgun round high. And now we have finally gotten out of this place. So we're gonna go to our next objective, which is heading back to the Aurora. And when you go back to the Aurora, go over to this little girl. I think her name is Nastia. Which is a horrible name for a child. <laughs> Sorry, all Russians, but I think it is. And if you stand by her for a little bit, she'll talk about that her teddy bear was taken by mutants. She lost it and she wants it back. And when you start heading for it, Stepan, the big guy with a beard, is going to contact you via radio and ask you to pick up a guitar that he has been that he has heard playing from this tower and this is a bandit encampment and the reason for me picking up <laughs> the guitar and the teddy bear is that they will give you good karma because you're a nice guy like artyom always is at least in my walkthroughs he always is and they will also Picking up both of these things will give you a trophy called Friend of the Crew, Friends with the Crew, something like that. Yeah, Friend of the Crew I think it's called, which is a bonus trophy that you can unlock. And also, I li as I've done in all my walkthroughs, whenever I have the chance, of unlocking a bonus trophy to give you that extra little bit. I always try to go for it. Except for when it comes to collectibles. <laughs> and some of you may think that the Art Artyom's upgrades count as collectibles. No, they fucking don't. <laughs> because they actually give you an advantage. There are some, some upgrades that are super good to use. 
I always go for the compass, I go for the ammo vest, and the night vision goggles, and the reinforced helmet, which is really good because it lets you take more of a beating, and I am not by any means an elite player when it comes to this game, so I, n <laughs> I think it's feels like an extra security. Especially if I'm gonna get through this game on uh, hot Ranger Hardcore. But that is a project for another day. Now I'm... As I said, I'm playing Sekiro very much right now. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm a big fan of the Dark Souls games and the Bloodborne games. And... Uh, this... Initially feels very similar and still very different from those games. And now I think we have just one guy left, yes. And he does the smart thing, he gives up. So we just knock him out, and now you're gonna see things speed up a little bit. This is the game at, I think, triple speed. And the reason I've done this <laughs> is because I'm gonna show you how to get up to the guitar, and... I went through a lot of corpses here, trying to scavenge as much as I can. That is something you don't see when I've trimmed out all the things in between the combat. But all the mutants I run into in between these sections, I've just run past. And you can do that. Just pause this video on the map sequences and see where I'm running. Try to remember the path I have drawn, because the path I have drawn is the path I ran. And I've just run past everything in those sequences. But whenever I find a house or a hut or some shit like that, I always go in and scavenge for resources. And I try to keep my ammo count as high as possible. But here we have the guitar. And now we're gonna do a little puzzle. This is probably when you get here. First, you will get to the front of this shit, but you have to move around to the backside and pick up that gas can. And go in and start the generator. Because now we're gonna do a little puzzle to get our next upgrade, which is the battery charger. Which will allow you to you can charge your uh, flashlight and night vision goggles and stuff like that, but the battery charger makes them stay lit for longer. It takes a longer time before you need to charge them again. And this puzzle is really easy. Once again, I have sped things up just because... As I said at the beginning of this video, I started out with five hours. I think it was of video of raw video and I wanted to keep this guide or this level in as few episodes as possible first I had all the transport in I just sped it up and then it would have become I think it was four videos four videos around 20 minutes each and if you're following this guide and you want help to get through it, you don't want to divide it into four parts. That is, that is asking a lot. But by skipping out all the transport and speeding up a few parts, I have managed, managed to take it down to two 30 minute videos, which I think will... 30 minutes is around the time that I think a video can be. After that, it gets a bit, bit too long. But this, these videos are also very effective. <laughs> and this bandit encampment, as you saw, when I came here, here we are going for the reinforced helmet, by the way. Yes. And as you saw, I threw in a grenade, and I think I took out three guys with that one grenade and if you move in here by daytime 
They will always... Wow. That was clumsy. I did not check the area properly. Had I not been an idiot... <laughs> always be careful. Never assume that everyone is dead <laughs> before you walk in. Had that been on Ranger Hardcore, I would probably have died. And he did his best. His friend over here, once again. The last guy usually always gives up. He does not want to die because he has seen you being extremely effective. And back in that church, once again referring to that, but when I did my first playthrough, actually what made me stay on neutral grounds was that when there were like four or five soldiers left, they actually gave up. And I think that was the game just throwing me a bone, giving me the chance to fuck off while before I had burned all the bridges when it came to those technophobes. Which is decent of the game. And now we're going for the teddy bear. Just to the left of this tower, there are two guys listening to a radio. Just sheath your weapon when you see them and go up. And feel free to talk to them. I think there are a few resources there. And they are part of the cult. Or the church. And uh, they just want to escape and enjoy the modern life for a little bit. And here we have another bonus trophy time. A trophy called Firebird. Because there is one of those flying demons sleeping here. So I'm going to equip a Molotov. Make sure to crouch down while you're moving up to him. Because he is asleep, but he is not deaf. <laughs> but Firebird trophy is unlocked by killing a mutant with fire. And since he is sleeping, he is basically a sitting duck. Just throw in one Molotov. That will make turn him into the world's... Biggest, ugliest chicken McNugget. And we can move in. I'm being very careful so I don't get burned by the flames. But then we can move in and pick up the teddy bear for Nastia. And we are going to return the teddy bear and the guitar at the end of this level. Which will give us the trophy friend of the crew. And now, once again, I've sped things up because we are heading for the very last upgrade you're going to see in this video, which is the metal detector. The one I missed on my first playthrough, so you will see the Dressed for Success trophy pop as well. And there is no g new game plus. I recorded this from a new game file. So you... The upgrades don't carry over, just the statistics that you have found them carry over. And it is inside this little shack. What I didn't realize first was that I was being chased by Watchmen. So I'm trying desperately to get in as fast as possible. Because I want to get in here and just put my back into a corner. This may not be the very most effective way of doing this. Doing this. Maybe I should have killed them before I went in, but when you have the possibility to do it like that, you can use the door as a choke point and they will have a harder time getting at you and they cannot surround you. But in here we pick up Oh, there's one guy left. Go kill him, Wolfman. Nope. Just gonna ignore him for now. Here we have the metal detector. Feel free to use the metal detector instead of the compass if you want to. I just did it to know exactly where I was supposed to go at all times. And there you see the dressed for success trophy. It will not pop for you here if it's your first playthrough. But that concludes part one of the Volga level. And I hope you have enjoyed it and found it helpful. And... Uh, as always, I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in my next video. So until next time, this is the Wolfman signing off.